Hey friends, this is Grace. Welcome to my channel and welcome to video, video number three in my la latest sketch, sorry, latest layout series. I am using a sketch. It's a bundle that you purchase at Scrapbook Generation and the link will be in the description box below. I am also using my six by six paper pads because um, it's been a while since I have used them and I felt like there's a need to use them up. Um, this particular sketch had the full six by six papers kind of at an angle and just spread on the background. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, this paper pad is from Studio Calico and I purchased it on Tuesday, a Tuesday morning many, many years ago. And I'm just using them up. There are some bold oranges and pinks and then black and whites in here. So I thought that it will be, it's a nice combo. Now I have to say, I think I said it in the previous video where I don't like a layout without a border. Well, this one doesn't really have a border, but I liked how it turned out. So I guess I surprised myself <laughs> with this particular one because I really liked the design of this sketch and just the way it turned out. Now, these are photos of my family's fall photo shoot in 2020. I'm trying to think. Yes, 2020. Um, we did two because as the photographer of the family, I didn't like my the first one. And so we redid it. And so there's, that's why there's two different outfits here and two different locations as well. So I am just going to add my photos on the center of the sketch or of the layout. The sketch called for, I think it was three by five photos, but I only have four by six. So I'm going to trim them down here. Now, um, most of the photos are vertical, except for the one that has all of us as a family. And it's a horizontal one. So I'm going to try to figure out how to put that in there. Do I put it on the side or on the top or on the bottom? Or do I put it with the rest of them in the center? And that's what I've ended up deciding to do. I am going to trim that into a four inch photo um, and then move things around so that I can add it. So now I have a, an odd number of photos, which I like. I prefer odd when it comes to designing layouts, but I will be trimming some of that down because I want to, I want to see the design of the paper pad on in the background as well. Now um, I will be matting the, the whole block of photo just so that it will stand out against um, the background. Here I am trimming a few here and there just so that it doesn't span the whole left side and it covers up the the, the papers that I am going to painstakingly add to that. Now, I know that the papers that you're seeing in the background still has the, the barcode strip or the strip with the circle in the middle. I will be cutting that out as I adhere it, but if you ever have ever seen me do any layouts, you know that I kind of like to lay them all out first before adhering anything just so that um, I can move things around if I don't like what I'm seeing so far. Now, the trick about these kinds of layouts that I found is that you really have to treat your double page layout as a single canvas because the papers, especially, they cross over both pages. So that's what I did here. I added a washi tape to connect those two white papers cardstock and then started adhering all of my papers and then now i am just trimming off the excess for both left and right and i'm using a quilters ruler because it's wide and it's long longer than my 12 inch ruler and then my craft knife because it's easy now i do as you can see i do have a mat self-healing mat on my table and that allows me to cut and use you know do these kinds of cutting without ruining my table 
and I'm sorry that my head is in the way. That is the only way I could, you know, cut this properly. And as just, you can see, I didn't even cut that properly because then now I have to trim some of the excess off with some scissors, but it's all good. And then because now I'm only working with single page, then I can go ahead and cut it with some scissors. So that is my paper. Now I have some edges there that doesn't have paper and I in intentionally did that so I can use the leftovers from the papers that I cut to add to my layout. There is a tiny gap between the paper blocks, which I thought was a really clever design because then you can still see a background and they don't blend with each other, you know? There's that significant difference or I guess significant end for one paper to another. And if you are new to this series, I had purchased a sketch bundle for double page layouts at Scrapbook Generation. Um, and I am creating layouts with those sketches. I cannot show you the sketches itself because they, you have to pay for them, of course, but these are the layouts that I'm creating. The biggest um, motivator for me for doing this was because I wanted to use up my six by six pads. I have a few in my stash and I, they just, I haven't used them up. And so I pulled out 10 particular pads and my goal is to create 10 layouts. Now the sketch bundle has 20, which I thought is a really good um, number of sketches for the price that you're paying for the bundle. Um, but I am only going to do going to do 10 and I'm not doing them in order. I just am doing them depending on the photos that I find that works well for this particular sketch and then you know whatever papers that I wanted to use. I'm almost done with the background and that's it. It's so easy. Now the sketch called for some stitching that's going to happen in the background and I don't do machine stitching or hand stitching on my layouts. I just I don't have the time for that and so I'm going to do some pen stitching but I am actually going to do that at the very end of my layout process just because I know that parts of this uh, background, even though they're really pretty, it's going to be covered up with my photos anyway. So I am not even going to do any of that until I know where the photos are laid and then I will just kind of work around it. Now I think I cut a little bit too much from that back bottom part, but I'm okay with that. Uh, that's not a big deal. So now that my background is done, my photos are also matted already. And as you can see, there's a little space on that four inch square photo because it's just not a vertical, just it wasn't a vertical photo. Um, and so I'm just going to add some um, something there. Initially, I thought maybe I will add my journaling on there, but I didn't like the idea of the journaling block spanning across the other photos and so I am going to um, move that to the top right part of the of the page instead of on the you know be underneath the photo. Now I particularly picked this paper pad for these photos because the photos are very neutral there i mean there's some blues in there but the most of it are blues i mean sorry blacks and whites and um browns you know from the background and so i felt like the oranges and the pinks they will work well because there's not a lot of other warm colors competing with it so that's why I went with that. Now I decided to just add a little bit of roundness to the journaling block. And I usually do this when there's a lot of hard corners on my layouts. And as you can see, this particular page 
do have that. I mean, the papers are on a diagonal, which makes it really interesting, but still, the squares and the rectangle designs have some strong edges. So now this time I am going to, I just decided that I'm just going to cover that up with some paper and I particularly picked the camera one because it just, you know, emphasizes the theme of the family picture taking that we were doing here. So I'm just trimming off, which I think would be enough size for that particular area. And then I'm going to adhere that to my layout. And then now it's time to decorate, add my title, and do all of the finishing touches. Now I have pre-cut some generic words that I thought would be good for titles. And I usually cut them in some script fonts just because um, it will work well, you know, marrying that with some sticker blocks, uh, alphabet stickers, and things like that. And so I'm looking for words that would work well. Now, I really like the word thankful. Um, the only thing is that that brown is just not standing out so much. And so I'm figuring maybe I can put the gold one. But for some reason, they're not standing out down there. And I think part of that was because of the orange background. So I move it to the top. But the problem is that little curve there is covering up my children's faces so i cut that off and so now i still have the word but just without that extra extra flourish on the background now i am going to put um, or add some more stickers to finish off the title but first i'm going to see what other things i can use to decorate this particular layout um, the background is really busy, and so I am going to contain my embellishments just on the bottom right of my photos and then the top left. And again, I'm just grabbing some random stickers, just trying to see if they'll work well. There's some blues in here, and so that's kind of why I'm picking these particular accents, is so that they will blend with the blues in my photos. And then because I used a tag on that side, I might as well just use another tag on here, which I'm just glad that I happen to have all the stuff that I needed to complete this layout. It's not great when you have random things and they work out that you can use a bunch of them on the layout, even though really they don't really, they're, they're different themes, you know, like the butterflies and the tags and all that, but they worked out over here, so I'm okay. And then I think I am about done. I will be adding, I think I'm gonna add a washi sticker on the bottom of the, um, orange paper there close to the photos and then I'm going to add or finish off my title but I'm going to adhere those um, the die cut word and uh, adhere that with some liquid glue and I'm using my stamping block in order for me to um, hold that die cut word in place so that um, it won't come off. And so I just finish it off with the word extremely. So my title is extremely thankful and I am extremely thankful for you. So I hope that you guys like this and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.